We've seen that flat and curved mirrors can be used to manipulate images, but a more common device to do that is the lens. And lenses can occur in nature, for example in the eye. The surface of the eye has a lens which is made of transparent cells. And remember that light travels slower in materials, and so if you have a large amount of light coming into the eye, then when the light hits the middle of it, it's going to slow down, and the light at the edges is going to go faster, and so it's going to wrap around and come together. And if you build the lens right, so you have the right thicknesses varying as you go across, you can have parallel rays of light coming into one point called a focus. And that's called a converging lens. And you can work out how images work for converging lenses in exactly the same way you do for mirrors. So if we have a focus for a lens, and we have to have a focus on either side because light rays could go either way through a lens, then if you have an object on one side, you can figure out what kind of image you're going to get by following the normal rules of light rays. A light ray that goes through a focus will go out parallel. A light ray that goes through parallel will go through a focus. And so you can see that these two rays appear to be coming from something back here. And so in this case, we've got a virtual image of someone. Alternatively, if you have someone standing outside the focus, you get a different kind of image, but you work it out the same way. Parallel rays go through the focus, and rays that go through the focus come out parallel. And so here you can see that the light rays really seem to be coming from this point. So that's where the top of the head image is, and that is a real image, and an inverted one. So you can see the way you work this out is the same every time. Remember, these things are called converging lenses. You can also build diverging lenses. A diverging lens has more material on the outside and less on the inside, like this. What that means is that light rays are going to go the other way. The ones that come in parallel are going to spread out. And if you build them just right, you can make it so that they all seem to spread out from a particular point, which is also called the focus. And because lenses are symmetric, you can have light go either way. You have a similar focus on the other side. And you can also make images with diverging lenses following exactly the same rules. So here we have our object, and if we have a light ray that goes in parallel, it'll seem to come out from this focus. And if we have a light ray that's coming out parallel on this side, then it has to be as though it was going through this focus. And so we can see that the two rays on this side appear to be coming from a point back here, and so we have a virtual image down here. And once again, we're just following exactly the same rules to work out where our images are. And we can do that no matter where the object is in relation to the focus. So we know that light travels slower when it moves through materials. The reason it does that is that it's interacting with those materials. And just to spoil things a little bit, light's actually an electromagnetic wave. And the reason it does that is that molecules are made of little charges that can oscillate. And so that when the wave comes through, it interacts with those oscillators. And it may be no surprise that the frequency that the light's oscillating at and the oscillation of the molecules matter. So when the light has a particular frequency, it's going to interact with certain molecules more than others. And the practical upshot of that is that light actually travels at different speeds for different colors. So different frequencies, different colors of the light when they go through a material often travel at slightly different speeds. So all these lenses are actually only going to have a particular focus for a particular color. Let's zoom in on a certain part of a lens. So if we just have a wedge of glass, say like this, that's called a prism. And if we shine light on a prism, we can see how the different colors of light split up. So if I have green light coming in at an angle, we know that at this interface, it's going to bend in because light's traveling slower in the glass. And then when it gets to this angle, it's going to bend out. And so my light is traveling through like that. However, supposing I have blue light, it's going to come in. And supposing it doesn't bend quite as much, so the change in speed isn't quite as dramatic, then it's going to diverge a little bit, spread out. Then the angle's not going to change quite as much here either, and so it's going to spread like that. And so on for red, supposing red bends a little bit extra, then what we get is we have things that are initially going in all parallel, but then the different colors spread out, and the different frequencies fan out, and what we've got here is a rainbow. And this is exactly how Newton found that white light was made up of different colors. He had a prism, he had sunlight coming through, and he could see the beautiful rainbow made. And this is exactly how actual rainbows are made, except instead of glass, the prism is made of water. So it's water droplets. Actually, the production of rainbows in water droplets is a little bit more complicated because you often have multiple times when the light actually bounces around inside the water droplet. And the reason it does that is something called total internal reflection. Supposing you have a surface of a water droplet like this, and if we look at the normal vector, 
And if a light ray comes in really close to that normal vector, then it's not going to bend very much. It's just going to bend a little bit. And if we have, this is the water on the inside, and this is the air on the outside out here, then we know that the light ray is going to speed up. And so if it speeds up, it's going to bend away a little bit. And we know how to work out the change in those angles. So the sine of the incident angle divided by the sine of the refracted angle is just the ratio of the speeds. So if the speed of light is V1 inside the water and a larger V2 outside in the air, then the ratio of the sines of the two angles is just the ratio of the two speeds. This is Snell's law. And you'll note that if we come in a little bit blunter like that, then we'll refract out that way and so on. And if we look at this, there comes a special angle at which if we were to come in at that angle, then we'd actually try and refract right along the boundary. So that's where we try and make the sine of the refracted angle equal to 1. And we know that sine can't get bigger than 1. So if our incident angle is any larger than that, something strange has got to happen. What happens is, if you come in at an angle that can't refract, then it just reflects. And indeed, you always get a little bit of reflection and a little bit of refraction, except when the angle is so big that you can't get any refraction. In that case, you get all reflection. And so what happens in water droplets is you often have a lot of these events where you get complete reflection, and this is called total internal reflection. And this is actually a way of making a very high efficiency mirror. So some kinds of mirrors are actually based on using total internal reflection.